All right, everyone, so for day two of our class, what we're going to talk about is setting up our device so that we are able to deploy to it. We are going to create a taco project, and then we want to see it on a real device, if you have a real device. If you don't, you can just follow along for a moment, maybe review handouts one and two, but we're going to look at handout three, A, to talk about setting up a real device. Do not plug in your real device yet until we follow these steps. And so, as I've been saying previously, any Android device will work. And I like this one from Motorola. Um, any device should work. And now, the general concept of what we need to do is we need to activate our device as a developer's device. This is not going to jailbreak your device. This is not going to break your warranty or anything like that. We're just going to activate the um, developer features because by default most Android devices, most any iPhone, Android, whatever device is set up as a consumer device. A regular person just wanting to use it to make phone calls and get on Facebook and Snapchat and all of that. But we need to also use the device as a developer to sideload apps, meaning to put apps onto it without going through the official app stores. Eventually, of course, our apps will be uploaded to an app store where anyone can download them. But what we need to do is set up developer mode. Depending on your device, this will be very easy or not so easy. And what always happens, as I've been teaching this class for three years, there's always going to be some variation. Especially, unfortunately, with some of the more no-name brand devices, the really inexpensive devices often are a little bit more locked down than you would want and some of these steps won't exactly apply. So my handout here is saying do not plug your device in. What we need to do on step one is we need to set up our real Android device for developer mode. Depending on your device, these instructions might not be exactly the same for yours. So what I'm saying is every device is different follow these approximate steps, go to your home screen of your device and press the menu or settings of your device. On my particular device, basically I need to go to the settings of my device. So on mine, I can swipe down from the top, and if I tap at the top, I get a little gear for settings. You can probably find that also if you go to your apps, your app screen, and find your settings. Now one is Google Settings, Perhaps that's not the right one. You want regular settings, device settings. I can't exactly show you what I'm doing on my screen here because everyone's is different. But I'm in the settings of my device. Um, you might have an item from this menu that says developer options. You probably don't because it's not set to a developer device yet. So I have here, if you don't see developer settings option, go to settings and then about phone and tap build number seven times. So they've hidden this most often times. So what I'm saying is you're probably need, going to need to go to your about settings and you're going to see status, legal info, blah, 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 probably somewhere build number. You need to tap that seven times. I'm going to tap one, two, three, and then it's going to tell me. Two more taps to developer mode. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, then it says you're in developer mode. Almost. If you activate developer mode, then you have to back up to the previous screen, and then now I have a, a little icon to tap that says developer options. I'm going to tap that. When I'm in the developer options screen, I have to activate USB debugging. You will get a big scary pop-up that says, allow USB debugging. USB debugging is intended for development purposes only. Use it to copy data between your computer and your device. Install apps on your device without notification and read log data. In theory here, we've opened ourselves up. In theory, we could accidentally download an app that is going to harm our device, in theory. We're going to activate developer options for as long as we need it to add our apps and such, and then at the end of the day we should turn it off 
when we go home, or else we're going to have this option turned on where possibly if you don't pay attention to what you're doing, you could download some weird app and install it very easily without confirmation. That's what it's warning me about. So I'm going to tap it. I'm going to say, yes, I know what I'm doing. I'll click OK. And you'll probably also see an option for stay awake. I'm going to turn that on because I don't want the screen to be turning off every, you know, three minutes or whatever timer you have. And I have to unlock it every time. It's going to be plugged in. It's going to be charging. So I want to leave this on while I'm in developer's mode. Once I activate those two features, USB debugging and stay awake, I'll go home. Let me pause for this moment. Is anyone having trouble activating that developer icon? Device is a little bit different, so hopefully you found where you needed to to set that. So that's in general step one. You still don't want to you don't want to plug it in yet. You have to activate the device for developer mode. Again, this is not jailbreaking it, this is not voiding your warranty or anything. This can be turned on or off. Mine's in developer mode. The next general step, two is that we need to download the OEM USB driver, the original equipment manufacturer USB driver. There's often a USB driver 
for consumers, which is like the software that you use to transfer your music from your computer to your device. Well, we need the developer's driver. We need the OEM driver. This is where it's going to vary a lot for people also. If you've got a Motorola, if you've got a Samsung, HTC, etc., it's going to vary for people. Um, perhaps one thing to do is you go online and you search Motorola S6 whatever OEM USB driver. If you search for your device and the name of the driver, hopefully from the official website you should find the driver. Don't download the driver from anywhere else besides the official website. It may have weird things if you go elsewhere. So what I'm saying is, I'm going to open my web browser. How many of you, quick question, how many of you have a Motorola device right now? If you have a Motorola, I think you'll just be able to plug it in because mine's Motorola and I've already installed it on our computers so I can use mine easily. So if you've got a Motorola, it'll probably just work by plugging it in. If you don't, here's what we'll need to do. Let's say I have a Samsung. I would search Samsung. Galaxy S6 OEM USB driver. Whatever your device is, I would search for its name plus OEM USB driver. I would not click this one. Team Android. That's not the official website. What's the next one over here? Android mods.com nope I wouldn't click that one Android mods recoveryandroid.com so you see this is always going to be a little challenge for most people to get this specific driver perhaps what you could do also is go directly to the website samsung.com and probably somewhere under support you need to look up your exact device model number Let's see, just randomly here, Samsung, Owners and Support. Manuals and Downloads, probably I need to go there. Again, I don't know exactly, I don't have a Samsung device. You'll need to do a little detective work yourself. But I might go to the Manuals and Downloads. Mobile phones. And I need to then figure out well, what's my product? There's lots and lots and lots of these, so you have to find yours as, as best as possible. And this is the annoying part that I've seen throughout the years for Samsung people. It's going to say, well, okay, what model number do you have? I don't know. I thought I had the 6S. Well, you probably have something like the 6CHI435L, some weird number that you'll probably find it in your about phone screen and oftentimes you also find it under your battery so this is as far as I can help people here we'll take a moment to figure this part out but the general concept is you have to find your driver you have to install the driver once all of that is installed then you're gonna plug in your device you won't know if it's fully working really until we actually then deploy our app to our device. We'll do that in a moment, although this is suggesting what you could try to do. Basically, it's going to be taco run android space dash dash device. That assumes you have an app. If you didn't save the app from last time, that's okay. We're going to create a new one. We're going to create a new one in a moment. But let me show you what hopefully you get. I, I will plug in my Motorola device to my computer and one way to check if this is working is you might get a pop-up that happens in the corner of, of, uh, of the windows. Everyone please remember to mute your devices, please. You might get not one of these autoplay pop-ups. You might get a pop-up in the bottom right corner that says recognizing device. And it might find it or not. You could also possibly check by right-clicking computer and looking at let's see where's the fastest way. Right-clicking computer properties, device manager. 
yeah, here's one way to see if it's all working. If you go to the Start menu, you right-click on Computer, right there on the Start menu, Properties, Device Manager on the left side. This will tell you everything plugged into your computer. If you see that it successfully says something like Android device, especially something that says ADB interface, most likely it works. We won't be able to fully test it, however, until we try to load an app. So let's take a moment here then to see if we can get people to get to this point that your computer recognizes your device. Anyone need a little help getting to this point? I don't believe so, um, especially if you have my device as well. So it's not adequate No, it's a media device. It's not a, it's not a developer device. So as a media device, it, it'll just let you like copy music over. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to install an app. So it should be something more like this, where it's an ADB type of device.
I would just select the very first one. Um, you seem to have many of them, but they're probably all similar. Maybe just variations of the manufacturer or something. So just select the very first one and upload. And then download the file, install it, and then plug in the device.
Did you go to page two and three and such? Yeah.
Well, once we clear an APA file, perhaps drop it right in there. Every time, every time we build your recording your APA file, we can drop it into that download folder, perhaps, and the mouse recorder. questions I think we've got almost
Then I worked with heavy computer systems and all of that. Yes, it is one All right, everyone. So that um, hopefully, perhaps we got something working.